So hopefully everybody's having a all right Monday morning, I guess. Um, remember, exam three is uh, on Friday, November 19th. So, so that's this Friday. So remember, we pushed it back one week. Um, quiz four was returned today. So if you didn't get your quiz four back, um, it's probably because when I got to your name, you weren't in the class yet. So uh, if you could come by after class, I'll give it to you. Um, the average was about a 17 out of a 30. Okay, so um, it's lower than what I would have expected, but um, bodes well for everyone, right? So uh, remember, if you're online, schedule your exam with the testing center between November 17th and, and um, well, really 18th, uh, the 19th, you can come in and take it with us in class, okay? Um, if you want to do that, make sure you email me and tell me, okay? Um, the exam will cover the end of Chapter 6 to whatever we finish today. Remember, there's uh, the practice exam that's posted. There's uh, the solutions to the practice exam that's posted. Um, the quiz 4 uh, is posted. The solutions are also posted to that. Um, remember that just because I post something like a quiz or something like that doesn't mean that those four problems or those five problems are the only problems that I could test you on, okay? So it's clear to me that a lot of you guys decided that the only six problems that were relevant were the ones that were on the practice quiz. Of course, if you look um, at uh, the two chapters, seven and eight, uh, just look at the back of the book and there's like 100, 150 problems, you know? So if you're only studying five out of 150 problems, you know, you're kind of, what they say, putting all your eggs in one basket, you know, and it's um, just not the best way to go about things. Of course, um, those practice quizzes are quizzes that I gave last term, you know? So it's, you know, I mean, just like you, they had to study a lot of other stuff too, you know? So don't just put all all your trust in that uh, practice quiz, although it will give you an idea of what the quiz should look like, you know? So um, remember, we have a review session today after class, 10 to 11. Um, in, I emailed everybody about that this morning too. But um, in that review session, the first thing I'll be doing is going over this quiz four, okay? So um, if you guys did as well as you'd like to on the quiz four, then I would suggest you don't have to stay, you know? But if you did maybe a little less than what you would have liked to do, maybe you um, should stay and figure out how to do those problems. Because uh, of course those problems are, uh, going to be similar to problems to what you find on the exam, okay? Uh, so uh, that being said, we can get started and get finished with Chapter 9 unless there's any questions. Yeah? Uh, so I think it's on the syllabus. I think it's... Well, so that's for online people, okay? Yeah, so it's different. I think... I think it's Wednesday, right? Yeah, I think it's Wednesday. And I don't, and I, is there a time on there? Does it say, maybe, um, is this, that's just the schedule. Yeah, December 15th. No, so that's the week of the 13th. Okay, so it's December 15th from 1040 a.m to 1.10 p.m., okay? So I'll give you, it'll be, it'll be about an hour and a half long test, <laughs> but if there's nobody in here afterwards, I'll give you more time if you guys need it. You know, it's, I won't make a really long test, though, or anything like that. Okay, again, if you guys didn't get your quiz four back, it's because you came in after I uh, found your name. If you're one of those people, come back, uh, come up and get it after class. The average was about a 17. Okay, so any more questions? Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, recall the last thing we were doing last time uh, was looking at this uh, reaction of 
one water molecule with another water molecule. Let's write this mechanism up on the board. So we've got one water molecule. So remember how I was showing you about the arrows and the electrons and whatnot. So I'm just drawing the Lewis structures here. Okay, so if we wanted to write the equilibrium constant for this reaction, remember the equilibrium constant is going to be what? The products? Over the reactants, yeah. Okay, so in this case, the products are H3O plus OH minus, right? And we've got two H2Os, right? So because we've got an equilibrium arrow, we can write an equilibrium constant for this reaction, right? And when we do that, the equilibrium constant is going to be, remember, it's the concentration and molarity, okay, so brackets around the hydronium ion times the hydroxide ion over water squared, right? But when we're writing our equilibrium constants, we uh, don't put for um, solids or liquids, right? Only for uh, gas and aqueous. Of course, H2O is a liquid, right? So this term will cancel out of the equilibrium constant. So the new equilibrium constant for this reaction, and we call it actually KW, is going to be the concentration of hydronium ion times the concentration of hydroxide ion. And remember, if we switch the slide here, that that combined thing, KW, equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay, and since we have half of it is this and half of it is this, right? If we divide this by 2, right, we'll get uh, 1.0 uh, time, I mean, if we take the square root of that, I should say, sorry, uh, we uh, will get uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th molar for each of these concentrations here, okay? So, why do we care, right? Well, it's because we can use that information to uh, uh, do pH calculations. And, of course, if you've been looking at the practice exam, you're going to have to be doing pH calculations for that. So, uh, let's go over a pH calculation, so it ca says calculate, or in this case, this is the concentration of hydroxide. So it says calculate the concentration of hydroxide in a solution that has hydronium ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so what do we know? We know that KW equals that. And that equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. What else does this give us? Well, it says that we know the hydronium ion concentration. So let's write that down. Okay. 
1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Right? Yeah. So is this solution acidic or basic? We'll talk about that in a little bit. So we know Kw. We know the hydronium ion concentration, and we're looking for this. So that's cool. We can just rearrange this equation around, right? So we get the hydroxide ion concentration. So what do we got to do? We got to divide both sides um, by H3O plus, right? When we do that, that cancels there. And we divide by H3O plus here. So that's going to be the new equation. So the hydroxide concentration equals Kw over H3O plus. Like that? Everybody follow me? Yeah? Okay, cool. And then 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. Um, Again, these, I'll put this in like uh, parentheses because these calculations won't give you the correct units because uh, the, the term of equilibrium constant doesn't have any units, okay? So you can't just cancel out all your units or get your units out of this one, okay? So um, unfortunately... I'll just erase that. And we have to remember that because this says uh, brackets around it, that uh, it's going to be a molar concentration. Okay? So when we do that, of course, it's going to be 9 because 14 minus 6 equals 9, right? So 1.0 times 10 to the negative 9th molar. Okay, and then the question asks, uh, the OH, or, well, it doesn't say, oh yeah, it says, is this solution acidic or basic? So, uh, if we look at, we can compare the concentration of hydroxide to the concentration of uh, hydronium. Right, so if we look at that, the concentration of hydroxide is smaller than the concentration of hydronium, right? Because this is a smaller number, 10 to the negative ninth is a smaller number than 10 to the negative fifth. Right? So if this is smaller than this, then we call it acidic. If it's the other way around, it's basic. If they're equal, it's neutral. Okay? So this one is acidic. The other thing you can think of is, is this to the negative seventh or not, right? So if you remember, these have to be equivalent to be pH 7, okay? Well, we'll talk, we'll talk about pH a little bit more, but water isn't acidic or basic. That's one thing we do know, right? Water isn't acidic or basic. So if this is going to be smaller than to the negative 7 like it is here, then it's going to be acidic. If it's going to be bigger than uh, negative 7, then it's going to be basic. Okay, so you can look at it a couple different ways. Okay, so what's all this acidic, basic, neutral stuff that we were talking about? So, all we're really talking about is the proton or hydronium ion concentration in these solutions. Okay, so if you have a bunch of protons in these solutions or a bunch of hydronium ions, protons and hydronium ions are the exact same thing, essentially, okay? Um, you can have a range of different acidities, okay? So depending on the amount of protons you've got. So you can have a proton concentration reasonably to about 10 molar, in solution and to about very small amount, 10 to the negative 15 molar. In fact, you can have smaller amounts than this or bigger amounts than this. They're just not commonly seen on the pH, P 
pH scale, okay? The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. So what you'll find is if you have uh, higher or lower than this number here, you're going to get pH numbers of like 15, 16, weird numbers, okay? Or if you've got something higher in concentration than this, then you're going to get negative pH numbers, okay? So that's strange too. But we don't have to worry about that so much because we're not going to be dealing with anything outside of this range of concentration in this class, okay? So how do I figure out what the pH of a solution is? Okay, well, this term pH, um, of course, a lot of quality con control jobs deal with a lot of pH if you ever been a lifeguard or anything like that, or a pool guy or whatever, I'm sure you've had to deal with pH, or if you're a gardener, or anything really, you know, you have to deal with pH. Um, so, what does pH mean? Well, pH. Okay, so... Um, why is this a small p? Why is that a big H? I don't know. Uh, okay, so this p here, <laughs> this p, that just stands for the negative log of something. That's all that means, this negative log of. And H, what do you guys think that means? The proton concentration. Good job. That's awesome. So yeah, so that just means the proton concentration, okay? So, if you look at what the equation for pH is, negative log of the proton concentration, right? That's the exact same thing that just that little pH stands for, okay? So, pH equals the negative log of the proton concentration. So, H, sorry, H equals proton which also equals hydronium ion concentration. Okay? Okay. So, here's some, like we said earlier, um, if we've got a uh, pH that is um, greater than 7, then we call it basic, okay? If we've got a pH that's exactly 7, we call it neutral, and if we've got a pH less than 7, we call it acidic. We call it neutral at 7 because that's when the concentrations of the hydroxide ions and the hydronium ions are the same. So they neutralize each other, they cancel each other out. Okay, so if we look here, we can see some common pHs, right? So one molar HCl, this is some stuff that you use in lab for a lot of you who don't like to wear goggles, right? You can get this stuff splashed in your eyes. This is pH zero, that would take out your eyesight pretty easily, you know? So you gotta watch out about this stuff. Um, stomach acid is about pH one to three. Right? If you've ever felt stomach acid, right? You can feel what a pH of one to three feels like. Uh, lemon juice, pH 2.2 to 2.4. Vinegar, 3.4. Beer, 4. Point, about 4.2. Unpolluted rainwater, 5.6. Urine. 4.8 to 7.5, milk 6.4, blood 7.4, seawater even more basic at about 8, detergent 10, milk of magnesia, like Pepto-Bismol stuff, right? That's 10.5. Why should that be basic, Pepto-Bismol? This is trying to soothe your stomach, right? So you got a bunch of acid in your stomach, right? So you got to get something that's basic in there. Ammonia, 
lie, and then one molar sodium hydroxide is 14 pH, which would also burn your eyes out if you got it in there. So you can see here this uh, picture of the universal indicator. So it shows the different pHs, and you can have an indicator, so some organic molecule that will bind to protons. Um, in this case, uh, the more and more protons you get, the more and more red you get, right? So it doesn't look like at the basic site, the or the basic pH is it changes very much, but once you start adding protons, it goes from orange to red to pink or something. Okay, so that's a good, this is a really good indicator to use. I know we uh, looked at that buffer um, lab a couple of weeks ago. It might have been more ideal to look at it after this week, right? Um, but you are hopefully a little bit familiar with indicators by now because of that. Okay, so let's uh, try some of these problems. So let's calculate the pH of a solution where the proton concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative ninth. That's what that says, right? So what do we know? We know this equation, right? And we know molar. pH is another thing that doesn't have, another uh, quantity that doesn't have units. So all we got to do is to negative log times 1.0 times 10 to the negative ninth. And I, again, don't put units there because it'll confuse you. People will put units at the end even though it doesn't have units. So the way I do this on my calculator is just type in, well, since this is 1.0, if it was something else, I guess I'll just type in 1.0 just to show you guys. I would normally just type 1, right? 1.0 E, negative 9, then push enter, and then just take the negative log of that number. Okay? And when you do that, find that it's 9. It's, there's, there's a button called log, okay. okay? So there's a button called log, and if you just, so most calculators have a positive slash negative sign that you can just push that button. So you push, what I, w what I always do is do the quantity first, and then just push enter. But if you like it, you can just do it this way too, you know? So take this um, quantity, quantity like that, and you can type it in your calculator that way too. Okay, so, um, sorry, uh, this should be 9.00. Uh, the reason being is because when you take the log here, it adds one more significant digit to your um, answer. Okay, I'm not going to be too concerned about that addition of one more significant figure. You should know that there should be at least two significant figures here, though. Okay. Okay, so if we were to ask ourselves, is this basic or acidic? Hopefully everybody would say this is basic because the pH is above 7, right? So are there any questions about this problem? Okay, so do you guys think you could do one on your own? That was just like this problem? except with a couple different numbers. So let's try this one. Okay, 3.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. So negative log So again, there should be three significant figures on this calculation, although so if you don't put three, you put two. That would be fine with me. Okay. 
So I got 3.44 for that answer. So if you guys didn't get that answer, I would check check yourself. Check yourself. <coughs> yeah. Um, if you didn't get that answer, it's probably because you're typing in something wrong, you know, like quantities wrong or something. Notice this. Notice this, that the last one was the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative ninth. Did you guys remember that? And our pH was what? Nine, right? Okay, so that's not a coincidence, okay? Notice this one. This one's about halfway between negative three and negative four, right? So this should be about halfway between three and four. Okay, so this number should correlate something with this number, okay? So I want you guys to think about your answers. Don't be putting strange answers like, I don't know, I don't know, some strange answer. Don't put like a pH of 26 or something like that, you know? Okay. Um, do we need to do another one of these? What, what's the pH of this solution? So you should be able to look at that and do it real quick. Four, right? 4.00, actually. But yeah, it's four, right? Yeah, so HCl, right, is a strong acid. So that's the thing, I guess that's the other thing this thing, this um, problem is asking us is to remember, can I erase this stuff here? Yeah, cool, okay. Remember, we have to know our strong acids. So do you guys remember what your strong acids were? Remember we talked about them on Friday? It, all of the halogen acids, right? And then there's a couple other ones. Um, but HCl, remember, why do we call it a strong acid? What does the strong acid do? It completely dissociates, right? Like that, right? So whatever concentration of this we have, right, what does it say? One point. That's the concentration of that. If we wanted to know the concentration of this, right, we would have this. And remember, the chemical equation tells us the ratio of you know, what these species are, right? So we got one to one to one ratio here. So if we go one molar H plus, one molar HCl, right? Molar HCl cancels out, giving us the concentration of H plus to be the exact same concentration as that. And then, of course, with that, you can plug that into your negative log equation. Does everybody understand what I did there? Okay. So remember, this is stuff we learned in, like, chapter three. Okay, taking the equation and doing uh, um, ratios with it. Okay, so here's another strong acid. Nitric acid, HNO3. So if you guys didn't know nitric acid was a strong acid, you might want to put that in your memory bank as strong acid. So again, the same thing here. 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth molar nitric acid. So what's the concentration of hydronium ions we should have in this? Um, No, the concentration of hydronium ions, not the pH of this solution. Yeah, you can tell me louder so everybody... Yeah, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4, right? How do you figure that out? Point to, point to where you could figure that out on the board. Everybody point to it, yeah, if you could. Just over there, right? Over there, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So what, what, should, what two numbers should the pH be in between, would you expect? Three and four, right? And hopefully you could do that without plugging that into your calculator, okay? 
And how would you be able to do that? How would you be able to do that? Yeah? How would anybody be able to do it? How would you be able to do it? <laughs> Not listening, huh? Yeah, who, who needs to listen, right? Okay, so since we've got this number here, 4, right? And since this is going to be between negative 3 and negative 4, we know that that number should be between 3 and 4. Okay? What is the number? 3.60, is that between 3 and 4? Yeah, just like we would have expected. Okay, so we can now hopefully calculate pH going forward. Okay, so let's now calculate pH or calculate the concentration of hydronium ions given the pH of a solution. Okay, so can I erase this stuff here? So, just like the inverse of addition is subtraction, and the inverse of multiplication is division, the inverse of squaring something is the square root, right? The inverse of any, or any mathematical function has an inverse of, or also has its inverse, okay? The log system is no different. Okay, so let's look at the equation that we had for pH. Okay, so that's pH. Right? And what if I were to be given the pH? Well, how do I get rid of this stuff, negative log? Okay? Well, what log really means is log base 10. Okay, so it's actually going to be the inverse of 10 to the whatever, okay? So, let's try to do this, right? That's log base 10, right? That's not negative log base 10. So, in order to get the negative out of there, we've got to put it to the other side, right? So, multiply both sides by negative 1, okay? We get now negative pH, right, equals the log of the proton concentration, like that. And then what did we say again? Remember, to get rid of log, we have to raise everything to the 10th power, right? So 10 to the negative pH equals, gets rid of log, right? So we could go... 10 to that, 10 to that, that cancels that and that. It's just the inverse, okay? <laughs> sure you remember that from algebra, right? <laughs> well, I mean, what else, what other math class is required to take before this class, right? Just algebra, right? college mathematics, so maybe college mathematics is the one that you should have taken to remember this one. <laughs> okay, either way, who cares? who cares if you've never seen it before? This is the way that you do it, okay? This is chemistry. Chemistry class, not really mathematics anyways. Okay, so 10 to the negative pH equals the concentration of protons. So, the concentration of protons in this um, equation, if the pH equals 5.92, okay, is 10 to the negative 5.92. Yeah. <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> Why should, it, why should it be the 10 to the negative 6? I'm, I'm asking why it wasn't 
Well, the thing is, is the pH isn't 6, it's 5.92. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you're right, you're trying to, you're, it's going to be somewhere in between negative 5 and negative 6, which is, what is the answer? Something, something, something times 10 to the negative 6, right? Yeah. 1.2, and remember, 3 goes back to 2, if you can remember that, you know. I don't really care about the significant figures on this, okay? I don't want you to just put one significant figure, okay, but be reasonable about things. So that, right, but we remember we also have to put units like that. Okay, how do we do that in the calculator? How did I do it? I did like this. In my calculator, here, 10 to the caret. Yeah, that caret, caret button. It's the one that looks like a little hat. And then I put quantity negative 5.92. So is everybody cool with that? No, you're still not getting it? Did you put it exactly like how I did it? Let me see. She said it's the that button. That button, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll look at it after class, okay. unless somebody else can show you, okay, during class. So if you can't get this on your calculator, you can come to me after class during the review session, since you all will be here anyways, and show me your calculators, um, and we'll get it taken care of. But the concept, right, everybody understand the concept. That's the important part. Okay. What about this one? What's the concentration of protons if you got a pH of 6.00? What is it? What should it be? 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6, right? Yeah. You should be able to do that in your head. After a couple of doing these, a couple of times, a couple of rounds, you really should, uh, it really will click um, pretty quickly, I think. Okay, so that's how to get the hydrogen ion concentration. That's how to get the pH from the hydrogen ion concentration. What if I wanted to talk about the hydroxide ion concentration? Okay, remember the pH doesn't tell me anything about that. It just says the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, right? But we do know this other term. Kw equals the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide, right? And that equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th Kw. So you can combine those two equations, this one and this one and you should be able to uh, get these answers. Okay, so let's go through this. Calculate the OH concentration for a solution with pH 4.0. What's the hydrogen ion concentration of this solution? Yeah, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4, right? Okay. Uh, you should, you could already just be like, well, the hydroxide ion concentration must be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 10, right? Because negative 4 and negative 10, or 4 and 10 have to add up to 14, right? But you can do it stepwise if you like to do a lot of work. And we'll do that right now.
Okay, so all we got to do is use those two equations. So it said that the pH 4.0. So, well, remember, we can get the hydrogen ion concentration doing that. So we got hydrogen ion concentration equals 10 to the negative pH, which equals 10 to the negative 4.0 which is, of course, the same thing as 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4. But now we've got concentration unit, molar. Okay? And then we know this over here. Remember, Kw equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. So if we're looking for the concentration of OH, well, that equals, remember, divide there. So we got Kw over the concentration of H plus. Concentration of H plus is that. Kw is that. Like that. Right? I just, I, I did it in my head, but you can do it in your calculator. So, just think. Just think. This... Well, I mean, you got to know that this is going to give you this number here, right? Because this, remember we said, is the equivalent to this, right? So... This and this will correlate, right? And this and this um, are going to equal, should, you know, equal to something. This plus this should equal that, right? right? Okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's how I did it in my head, like, really quickly, way a long time ago. And some of, these, some of the other students did it in their head, too. But if you can't, if you can't, there's a stepwise process to do that, okay? So we don't all have to do it in our head. That's the cool thing, you know? That's why we got calculators to do, you know? If you can't do this in your head right now, I probably couldn't have done it in my head when I was sitting in your spot, you know? So if you can't, don't feel like, oh, I'm missing something, you know? <laughs> but it is possible. That's all I'm saying, you know? So don't let it be so daunting, you know? Don't let it to be too daunting of a task to you. Now this one, you can't really do in your head, right? Because it's not pH equals uh, integer, okay? So, but this one's just 4.95, right? So 4.95 there. So 4.95 there. So now we've got to plug this into our calculator. 10 carat. So 3, so this should be 2. Like that. You would have expected that to be in between 4 and 5, right? And it is. I mean, you'd expect it to be closer to 5. Okay, and then here, all we've got to do is take this. And now let's plug this into our calculator. The way I will always do this, I don't know if you guys do this already, uh, we've talked about this before, I guess, is to quantify the top number, 1.0e, so quantity 1.0e, um, negative 1.4, and then divide that by quantity 1.1 e negative 5. And I get 9. Okay. Where it, I plugged this into plugged this into my calculator and I got this number. Yeah, so this is this number that's going through this stepwise process, okay? And then I take this number 
and put it here because of this equation, right? And then I get this number. And then I box my answer and I go to the next problem. Okay? So, to a lesser extent, the OH concentration can be expressed similarly. So the pOH equals the negative log of the OH concentration. So it's the exact same thing as the pH except opposite. Okay? The pKW, what do you think that means, pKW? What does P mean? What does P mean? Negative log of, the negative log of the KW. What's the negative log of the KW? Can anybody do that in their head? What's the PKW? 14, yeah, 14.0 or whatever, okay? That's the PKW, because that's the negative log of this number, right? Okay, what you'll find is that the pH plus the pOH add up to equal 14. So, since I see people are packing up and I'm not ready to go yet, I'll just skip this problem because I need to get to something else. But you can do this problem exactly the same way as you've done the pH problems. And in fact, we can go over this problem in the review session if you want. There's some other P constants that you're going to want to know. Okay, for weak acids, they have a pKa. And Ka is just the acid constant. So that's the equilibrium constant. Right, so Ka equals the KEQ of weak acids. So it's not anything special. It's just the KEQ, which is the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. Okay? And the P of the Ka is just the negative log of that, okay? So here's a list of Ka tables. There's a list of PKA, or list of PKA. So what you find is that if you've got, so it says this is a much more unwieldy number, the Ka, than the PKA. Just like the pH, I could just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, and somebody will know whatever pH it is, right? What if I say 3.0 times 10 to the negative 12 or something like that? You've got to figure out now what the pH is, right? Okay, so if I just say pH 8, everybody knows, oh, that's basic, okay? That's what the pKa does for you too, okay? So if I give you all of that, the, K, the equilibrium constant of that acid is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 9th, right? That doesn't mean very much to us, okay? But what we find is that when we convert it to this pKa unit, uh, that'll give us some, like, uh, idea of how strong this particular weak acid is, okay? So what you find is that if you have a very low pKa, you got a very strong acid. If you got a very high pKa, you got a very weak acid, okay? Um, Importance of pH and pH control, agriculture, crops grow best, physiology, blood pH, shift of pH, one pH unit is going to be fatal, so up or down, um, acid rain, of course, sewage treatment, industry. Um, and I don't think we'll get to buffers, so, so uh, you can cancel the buffer questions off of your practice exam. Okay, if you didn't get your uh, quiz, Stephanie Garza, um, come down and, yeah, review session in like two minutes, or a few minutes.